There's so many ways to see a simple walk on the earth and ways to experience it that, you know, for any one of the walks that I've ever taken, I could do a hundred paintings and each one would be different. Hi, Emily. Thank you so much for having us in your beautiful studio. I'm really glad that you guys came up. This is wonderful. Thank you. Whenever I traverse a landscape um, physically, like you know, walking or even biking, but not in a car. I feel like I have a better sense of the place's personality. Like I've met, mm -hmm. I've met the landscape more mm -hmm. so than watching it just, just fly by. Mm -hmm. Do these places have personality for you? I'm a walker mm -hmm. and I, I like to walk distance. I like to walk on a trail. I prefer to walk in the desert. And through walking, I feel like I familiarize myself with... Walking presents a challenge. You're breathing the air, you're suffering the weather, whatever it is. You're dealing with whatever comes up on the trail. Maybe it's a, a rattlesnake, maybe it's a puddle, maybe it's ice, maybe it's deep mud wind. I mean, you, walking puts you out there and you, it's a way of experiencing land. It's one way. So in these paintings, how does the walk come in? Like, what do you mean you? I often map the walk in my paintings mm -hmm. so that I'll use a little, usually white, little dotted line to represent myself and my movement through that, that place. Mm -hmm. But I think of my individual paintings as just a map or a response to, to a place. It's a map in the sense that I'm inviting the viewer to understand the whole situation of where I am in my walk. It's also a documentation of the walk so that, that you're, you're saying, well, this is, this is the place and here's where I walked. It's a simple communication of place. It, it's a two-part quality. It's the landscape and it's me so that my, in, my orientation, my emotions, my sense of place, all of those come into play on how I, how I feel about the landscape or what its tone is. But also I'm documenting places I've been and, and, and where I've walked, and these are meaningful places to me. Mm. And, and when you're walking, you are actually a living horizon between Earth and atmosphere. So you are connecting. Your feet are on the earth, your head is in the sky. So you're, you're a connecting agent. There's something happening under your feet, and then there's something happening to you, you know, the rest of your body that's in the air. Mm -hmm. And then there's you. I mean, whoever you are and whoever you're, however you're responding. And then there's the time, the moment. You're responding in a certain way. You're walking in a certain mood. You had a bad, you didn't sleep last night, you had a bad day, you had a good day, you came off a big breakfast, you know, whatever. All of that plays a role into how you perceive. So a lot of it is really just perceiving earth and air, or earth and sky, earth and atmosphere, through the medium of kind of of the road, of the path, or of the route. Oh, I can't wait to see how this goes together. Can you show us how, uh, show us some of your work? Sure, let's go over there. This is a very big piece of paper. <laughs> it's 72 by 45. And is this a, a blend of paper and fiber? It's all cotton. Mm -hmm. This made by Arches, which has a, a paper mill in France that was opened in 1492. And for my very first part, I always start real loose on all my work, and I just sort of decide on a color. My color approach today is going to be kind of grayish with a warm tint, so I'm mixing up um, viridian green. This is watercolor, and I'm using burnt scarlet to mix with it to gray, to warm up that green and get kind of a gray that's pretty warm. I happen to like the way these two pigments work together. So you'll see a lot of burnt scarlet in my paintings. 
What does the water do for you? Why are you wetting the surface? Well, it spreads the paint and it also helps, just like a sponge, a wet surface absorbs stuff better. If you have a wet surface, it's gonna draw the, the color down into the paper and then you can work in layers over it without really picking up very much. This is gonna be a painting about an area uh, west of Las Vegas called Blue Diamond and there's a big old mine there. The mine is going to be in the lower right corner and it's white where they cut into the earth. So I'm gonna to try to leave that area white and I'm gonna just start in putting in some, some color I didn't mix enough, but this will get you an idea. And you can see that it's flowing. It's flowing out real good. And then I can add more water and move it around. The more water that, that you add, the more cool things happen with watercolor. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are kind of afraid of water, but it's the greatest. The little feathering on the edges Yeah, there. and the pigments are different weights, so they're gonna mm -hmm. do different things. The green is probably gonna sink and the red is gonna flow. Yeah, the colors are separating out even though you're doing one stroke, you're getting sort of like a variation between the, the right. green and the brown. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fade this out toward the top because I really wanna kind of get the focal point down in this area. Mm -hmm. So this part will be a little bit, we'll have an underlying glaze that's a little more interesting. Some cool things happen when you put this red in. And if you've ever been to Las Vegas, you know that red is, Pretty, a pretty strong color down there. So I wanna kinda of get that. Now I know that there's a mountain range right over here. So I'm gonna kind of um, work that area with some color. And now at this stage, I don't really mind. Whatever happens with the, with the paint is good and unexpected. And so I just kind of finish out. I can add water in after it starts to dry and get some really nice explosions. Since you're doing this organic, natural thing, uh, using the, the natural chaos of the water, of the exactly. fluid as it flows, mm -hmm. helps make that texture. Yeah, and I, I sort of take potluck on this stage because I know that I can go over it later. I can even scrub it later, but um, they actually add a lot. So I'm not afraid of, of scrubbing or erasing or painting over. Sometimes, you know, I botch it up, but, oops. Now that got a little too green. I need to get some red. And, the, you know, those processes actually, they seem sort of like last ditch processes when you're in them. Right. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm standing on a hill right. and I'm looking out at the, the valley, but this is a very different perspective This is on a the mapped land. view or a, or a surveyed view. So it's, it's like a satellite view. Mm -hmm. So that kind of, that kind of area really interests me. I always think of my paintings as like a window because I really love that view. Now I'm pretty happy with the way this looks and I'm running out of color. So <laughs> we'll see, we'll add a little, let's get a little more color and just kind of go in here with something. Yeah, and then maybe the same with a little water. Mm -hmm. I like texture. This texture is gonna unify my painting because I'm gonna work in actual, I'll be working in actual, uh, in a grid, I'll be working square by square. So with this underlying kind of unity, the painting will have a little more um, unity. It'll, it'll look more unified. And I refer a lot to maps. I was raised with, my parents were both geologists and so maps were like a, a thing in our life. This land texture is in your blood. It is. <laughs> good. Yeah. So yeah, it is. I'm not scientific like they were, but look what's happening here. This is cool. So that could be developed into something and I'm getting a nice red area over there. As it dries, things happen. And I really like that this is, this is the beginning or the underpainting. Mm -hmm. that's gonna lead to, you know, something a little more exotic and complicated. But this will give, this is like the seed mm -hmm. of the painting. So it sounds like the, the walking, the exploration of the environment is an important experience to you as well as the creation of the art. It's the most meaningful thing that I have in my life. You know, so that's where my bliss passion and ecstasy are, you know, that that interface between sort of a micro activity of painting and the sort of macro activity of 
walking and being in a place and identifying the qualities of the place mm -hmm. that are affecting me, that turns out to me to feel really elemental. Mm -hmm. And when I think about painting, and I've painted uh, you know, for a long time, I just feel like the paintings that I do in relationship to land are the most, have the most power for me. They're the most satisfying. It's sort of like I kind of close a circle of, of a relationship with place by walking, painting, mapping, orienteering, all of that just works together like this to feel like I'm really engaged with a place. All our emotions and all our, our, our feelings are kind of fugitive and moments are fugitive. So a painting sort of stands in for a moment or sort of freezes a moment. Your paintings and the desert both make me feel small, but in a like good way, mm. in, a, in a connected way, mm -hmm. in a like I am also made of dirt sort yes, of way. You are. And so I definitely appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Good. When did you um, land on this particular style? When did you start doing these watercolor portraits of landscapes? They evolved. I used to do a lot of paintings that were more like lines or horizon lines, and they were a little more painterly in a way. They were more focused on the colors and the glazes that I was using and the cool resist that I was, I was practicing. But the idea is that we, we collect, you know, we're very intelligent people and we collect complex ideas of place. I like to walk the same walk over and over and over because it is never the same. I never see the same thing twice. Mm -hmm. And I think if my paintings could be like that, that would be wonderful. <laughs>